Hello everyone, welcome to our live demonstration of the Belimo Zip Economizer. Just a quick note, this Zip Economizer is wired for single dry bulb. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, the first thing you want to do is go into your settings. If you have a heat pump or a two-speed fan, that's the first thing that you want to set. So that'll be here and here. We're going to assume that we don't have those things. And therefore, we'll start at the beginning. So zip code, first things first. My zip code is 91792. Set that once it's set, go ahead and press escape, go back. This is for your heat pump operation. You could either set it to off, meaning you have a conventional unit, either gas or electric heating. Heat pump, zero power cool. Heat pump B, power heat. Heat pump W1, power heat. Okay, so if you choose the cool option, you're basically saying the reversing valve is powered for cooling and vice versa if you choose the heating. If you choose the W1, that translates to a standard thermostat where the reversing valve is controlled by an internal RTU defrost board. Okay, we're going to go ahead and go with off. You can see here it's detecting our compressor 1, but our CC2 is actually wired, so we're going to change that. Of course, you always want to make sure that you have the correct wiring, but change that here. You can see it's also detecting your exhaust fan and a two-speed fan. So you usually want to set those to auto, to auto if you know for a fact that it's wrong and you've checked the wiring you can manually set it. For our purposes we'll leave the exhaust fan and the fan two-speed as auto. Okay so that's your devices one. You can see here CC1, CC2, and an exhaust fan. Next, you have your devices too. This is concerned primarily with your uh, humidity sensors. Since we don't have any, it's set to auto and you don't see any here. All right, next up we have our ventilation minimum position. This you could set anywhere from zero to 100%. For this demonstration, we'll go ahead and set it to 20. You may not be able to hear it, but the actuator is actually setting or going to minimum position right now. Next up, since we have our CO2 sensors here, you're going to get the option for DCV minimum position. So this value is always going to be less than your minimum damper position. Okay, you can see it actually stops at 20. So we can leave it to 15% for this. Okay, after that, you're gonna be able to set your PPM set point. So we're gonna go ahead and put it to 1,000. Basically just telling your controller that any values above 1,000, the damper is gonna increase from the DCV minimum position, which in this case would be 15%, and the minimum damper position, which we set at 20. Next up, we have two-speed fan operation. If the unit has two-speed capability, then you need to set this to on. We talked about that already. So if you have an indoor fan for two-speed control, we're not gonna set it here, uh, but I wanna talk about it. So the next option that you'll have is your low speed ventilation minimum. So that sets your damper position for whenever the fan's in a low speed operation and that's always gonna be greater than the minimum position that we set, which would be our 20%. But the measured air flows should be the same due to the less available static pressure, okay? And then after that, if you have a CO2 sensor, you'll also get the setting for low speed DCV min. It's the same as your low speed ventilation min that we just discussed, but it's applied to your DCV position. So the range can be anywhere between your DCV minimum position, which in that case, our case, we set it to 15%, and the low speed ventilation minimum position, okay? We don't have a two-speed fan, so we're just gonna move on to our exhaust fan on position. 
Okay, and that's if we have the energy module. You can see it's wired here. We'll go ahead and set that to 50%. <clears throat> and this basically just tells the controller uh, at what damper position to turn on or turn off the, exist, uh, the exhaust fan. So there is a dead band of plus or minus 5%, so that way there's not too much cycling on the exhaust fan. And if you have a two-speed strategy, you'll also need to set your exhaust fan position for low speed. So you can see after that, our setup is complete, our, our damper is going to be rescaling, and then we can move on to continue our setup and do an advanced setup. Okay, so our dam damper has now scaled, and you could actually see the current status of the controller. For this case, my system is in ventilation. It's just having the fan go. And you can see we are at minimum percent damper position. So we're gonna go ahead and press okay. And let's go ahead and finish our settings. Okay, scroll down here. Go to 49%, we'll go ahead and fix that to 50. There we go. This is if you want degrees Celsius, but we'll leave it at just as degrees Fahrenheit. Next up, we have our purge. This is if you actually have a purge control wired in. You can choose to ventilate the building before occupancy times. We don't have it wired, so we're going to leave it off. If you were to choose on, the next setting would be the purge damper setting, which will give you the option of 0% to your minimum ventilation position. So you could choose anywhere from 0% to 20% in our case. Okay, remote damper control. This is for your potentiometer. So we'll go ahead and leave that off because we don't have it on. Okay, so with that, we've come to the options that have default settings from the controller that can be changed if you deem it necessary. Okay, so the first option is our high limit modification. Here you can change when the economizer is gonna go back to minimum. Depending on how your controller is wired, you'll get different options. For this demo unit, it's giving me the option to change my high limit dry bulb because I am in single dry bulb control. But you may also have the option of fixed enthalpy or differential enthalpy. And also it's important to note that the controller bases these defaults based on the zip code that you've entered and that changing them could result in non-compliance with energy code, as you can see here on the controller. You see mine's actually at 71 and that's what it is for my climate zone. Next up, our supplier temperature Y2 limit. It's defaulted to on. It's basically gonna keep the second stage compressor for a two-stage unit off if the supplier temperature is being maintained at 56 and a half degrees or below. So this allows the first stage to try to cool the space before kicking on the second. If it is set to off, then the second stage is will not be limited and will only have a compressor delay of 10 seconds, okay? So if you have it on, it's going to have a little bit of a delay. If you have it to off, it's just going to kick on after 10 seconds. Okay, so the next options actually don't show up because I have a firmware 1.0 on the controller, but we're still gonna talk about them. So you'll be able to set your low ambient compressor lockout, also known as LCLO, which is defaulted to keep the compressors off if your outside air temperature is less than 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and you could change that anywhere between 40 to 65 degrees. After that, you can set your supply air temperature set point that the damper is going to modulate to maintain. It's defaulted to 55 degrees, but you can modify it anywhere from 45 to 75 or 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And lastly is the COM interface option, which you'll have if you have the BACnet module installed, which I do have, but like I said, I have a firmware 1.0. You do need a firmware 2.0 for it to work. And that option basically lets you choose between MP active and BACnet active. Okay, so that's out of the way. We're gonna talk about the different things you could look at. First thing you'll see after you press your escape is the status of the controller. You could see it's in ventilation. This is also a good way to see 
and make sure that the controller is in the appropriate mode based on the ambient conditions that you're experiencing when you're out on site. So we'll go ahead and press escape. We're now in monitoring live conditions. Here you can see the operating parameters of the controller, such as supplier temperature, outside air temperature, damper position, CO2 level, etc. It's also gonna allow you to see your occupied status. So you can see all of the compressors are off. G is your occupied status. So our building is currently occupied. Our Y1 is our first stage of cooling. We're neither economizing or doing compressor cooling. So that's off. Our Y2 is off, that's our second stage. And we're not heating, so that's off as well. So you can see I'm in climate zone nine based off of my uh, zip code. Here's our high limit that we had talked about, the actual zip code I have, and then the runtime for our compressors, our economizers, our mechanical cooling, our DCV, our integrated cooling, which is your compressor running at the same time as your economizer, your ventilation, your heating, your unoccupied, occupied, freeze protection, and then lastly, your firmware. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and press escape. Next option you'll see is settings. We've already gone through that. Okay. Now we have present devices. So this is another good way of checking to make sure that all the equipment you have wired into the controller is actually being recognized by the controller. Compressor one, compressor two, our exhaust fan, we have CO2 sensors, an outside air temperature sensor, and a supply air temperature sensor, as well as our energy module and our comm module. That is all correct. We are good to go there. Next up, we have the alarm option. Okay, currently we have zero alarms. I'm gonna go ahead and trigger one. Okay, you see we are now in alarm. Go ahead and exit and go back out. Okay, we have a current alarm. Let's go ahead and see what we're going, what's going on. We have our supplier temperature, temperature sensor is not detected. So we've disabled the economizing and it'll give you an idea of when it happened. You could press your info. It'll tell you to verify your wire connections, verify your sensor ohm value and replace the sensor if the value is not present. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. Okay, so you can see here we have current alarms and we have historic alarms and you could check it from there. Okay, our last option is our service and commissioning. So when setting this up, the first thing you wanna to go to is the acceptance test here where you will choose the economizer test. All right. And it'll ask you if you wanna run it and it'll walk you through each of the parameters the economizer should meet in order to be accepted. And once everything's done, you'll press escape and return to automatic. For sake of time, I will not do the test. Okay, next one is the ventilation test. It's a manual test. It's gonna allow you to adjust the damper minimum position in the settings menu so you can verify the ventilation rates for outside air correct. Next up, you have your RTU test. You can test using the following, or test the following signals from the thermostat to the RTU. So your G, whether or not you're occupied, your Y1, which is your first stage of cooling, your Y2, which is your second stage if you have one, and your W1, O, or B, which is your reversing valve for your heat pump. And lastly is the DCV test. It's only gonna be available if you have the energy module connected and that will allow you to adjust the CO2 input to modulate the minimum damper position between your DCV minimum position and your ventilation minimum position. Okay. So exiting out and going back to the service and commissioning, you can see here we have our manual mode. So this is gonna allow you to manually set how long the controller will be overridden after that. So we'll say an hour. So now you could 
change your damper position, your compressor one and whether it turns on or off, your compressor two and whether it turns on and off, and your exhaust fan. And you could use those values to try to determine what's going on with the economizer. Turn to automatic. We're now back to the status, and that is the setup, service and commissioning, <clears throat> and status of the economizer. Again, one of the other things that you can check are your present devices and your alarms. So what you wanna do is use everything that you've learned in the commercial quality and maintenance class and apply that to this economizer, use it to test its different operations. Thank you for attending the video. If you have any questions, please let me know. I look forward to teaching you again. Take care.